Runaway lanes. What are they? Runaway lanes are lanes designed to stop trucks that have lost their brakes going down a hill and they're stopping these trucks from continuing to the bottom and then having a big wreck. This video is brought to you by DriveWise. It is not unusual for drivers, particularly new inexperienced drivers, to misgauge the amount of brake pressure and pedal work that they need to take a truck safely down the hill. And these ramps are designed to save drivers in that situation. And it's not always inexperienced drivers that make these mistakes. It's often experienced drivers that are overconfident or the trailer's got more weight on it than they expected or thought about or they haven't been underneath to check the brakes and that's when these things happen and that's when they need runaway lanes. Runaway lanes are located in mountainous areas of different states and provinces in spots where they've determined that there have been an unusually high number of truck wrecks and they've, they've decided that well because of all these truck wrecks They've got to put in some sort of a solution to that and they'll install runaway lanes on these spots. And they usually learn it from, from accident statistics. Uh, as for instance, Wolf Creek Pass on 160 in, in uh, Colorado, they learned that after 47 truck wrecks on a particular curve, that maybe they should put a truck ramp there. And that's, that's why they do that. Now, unfortunately, not all states and provinces do runaway lanes the same way. Some states are much better at marking and maintaining their runaway ramps than other states are. I like states like California and Colorado generally that use flashing lights to indicate when there's a ramp or runaway lane coming up so you can take it. Some states just kind of put a small sign at the side of the road. I don't think that's adequate. I wish they'd all mark all their runaway lanes really well so truck drivers could spot them easily because a guy that's lost his brake brakes is doing doing enough keeping busy just trying to steer the truck he needs big notification for when these lanes are coming up so he can start to think about whether he's going to need one or not there are three different types of runaway lanes the first one being um, a cut through the forest and up the side of a mountain that's basically pretty cheap for the state state to make because all they really need is a big bulldozer and a couple of guys with chainsaws and those are the most common ones and the truck will just hit the ramp or lane and shoot up to the top until it loses momentum and that stops the truck and it also keeps the truck out of the traffic so he's not going further down the hill and and wrecking and hitting cars the second type of runaway lane and this is used in california i've seen them are basically large pits that they, they take a lane off the highway, cut a large pit in the side of the road, and fill it with either sand or pea gravel. And the idea being that when the truck loses control, it'll run into this lane, and the depth of the sand or the pea gravel will actually slow and stop the truck. The truck will lose momentum as it gets stuck in the sand. And these, these lanes are even kind of nice because they don't necessarily need, need to be off to the right-hand side of the highways you're coming down the hill. I've seen California put them in wide median strips that bleed off on the left side of the road too. So there's something unusual for that type of runaway lane. These type of runaway lanes or ramps are more expensive for states to build and maintain because generally the, the sand or the pea gravel has to be reworked after every time a truck uses it. The third type of runaway lane, and you don't see them very often, they're not that common, are like a dragnet system and I've seen them in um, Utah and I've seen them in Northern Ontario and basically they're a cable or rester system much much like you see on uh, an aircraft carrier when it, it takes a plane that's coming into land it has an arrestor cable across the runway well on these runaway lanes they'll have a series of arrestor cables spaced at different spots on the way down through the runaway lane and eventually that will stop the truck. He'll hit enough of these cable nets and that will stop the truck. Now each one of these types of runaway lanes has its own particular set of issues. On the first type that we talked about where you shoot straight up the hill, the problem with that is that generally when you hit the top of the hill and the truck has already burned out his brakes that's why he's had to use the runaway ramp so he gets up to the top of this hill 
but then he's going to roll back down and eventually jackknife the truck. So generally that type of ramp means writing off the truck and trailer and load. And the danger to the driver is that he's got to kind of time it. So when the truck just stops before it starts rolling backwards again, the truck driver's got to jump because if he tries to ride it all the way down to the bottom, he's going to be in a jackknife and that never goes well with the truck driver because usually it jackknifes and goes on its side and then the truck driver gets injured. On the second type of runaway lane, they're, they're generally the easiest on both the truck and the driver because as long as the truck hits the gravel ramp in the middle and doesn't high side it on one side or the other, goes straight into the runaway lane, the momentum stops the truck and generally there's virtually no damage to the truck and if the driver has been smart enough to be wearing his seatbelt, as he should be, then that momentum of getting slowed all of a sudden won't toss them through the windshield. So generally drivers and trucks survive using that second type of runaway lane pretty well. On the third type that we discussed with the cable arrestor system, the problems with those are that generally that system destroys the truck. It writes off the truck and again, if the driver's not wearing a seat belt, that could toss him through the windshield and seriously injure or kill him. These cable arrest systems are very expensive to install and need to be reworked and rebuilt after every use and that's why you don't see a whole lot of these systems around. They're very expensive. Now when talking about runaway lanes, one of the questions that I get asked most often is, is there a fine from the state for using the runaway lanes? And that varies from state to state. Some will charge you depending on how much they need to put into repairing the ramp if they need to add pea gravel or something like that. And some states don't charge you at all. But uh, that's not the end of the cost factor because almost always when a truck has to use a runaway ramp, the DOT, the local DOT, will be informed of that and the DOT will come along, inspect the situation and they'll generally level fines at the truck and the trucking company and the driver for brakes out of adjustment or uh, loss of control of the vehicle or something like that. They'll find reasons to write tickets. That will cost you money and on top of that there are going to be tow bills and damage repair bills. So the whole thing is an expensive venture. I'll give you that. But the long and the short of it is no matter what type of runaway lane it is and the cost of using it is going to be far and away cheaper than the cost of not using a runaway ramp, going past a runaway ramp and just going down the hill and, and causing damage and often creating death. I'll refer to this Denver crash that happened in 2019 where the guy bypassed the runaway lane, went down the hill further and, and was basically stopped by crashing into a bunch of cars and killing some people. So the cost of that is far greater than using the runaway lane and which which choice should you really be making that's pretty self-explanatory when it comes to talking about runaway lanes i will hazard a guess to say that 95 percent of truck driver training schools don't talk anything about runaway lanes or train drivers about their uses how to use them when to use them and that's that's seriously lacking in the driver education program for truck drivers in my opinion now in the case of the Denver crash that I just referred to, the driver was A, inexperienced and new, B, hadn't obviously been trained about runaway lanes, and C, probably couldn't even read the signs that he was seeing, even though they were well-lit signs all the way down the hill. Because he didn't have a command of the English language, he probably didn't understand the purpose of them, what he should do, or how to use them. Another thing truck drivers need to know about runaway lanes is while they are often found in mountain estates on highways, interstates, and secondary roads, there's not always a runaway ramp when you might need one. So the best solution is to go down the hill more slowly in the first place and then you don't have that issue. And it's not uncommon for truck drivers to kind of ignore and neglect their brakes. And they have brake checks at the top of most major hills but it's not designed for the truck driver to get out, walk around and count the tires and get back in the truck, although generally you see that's what everyone does. Those brake check areas are to get underneath the vehicle and look at the brakes and check each brake individually to make sure they are in proper working order before they go down the hill. 
Now one assumption I've seen all sorts of company drivers and owner operators make is when they're pulling company trailers that the company that owns the trailer has maintained and has the brakes properly adjusted and that's an assumption that can kill people. Another assumption I've seen people make is that automatic slack adjusters never need maintenance and never need adjusting and that's also another mistake that can kill people and that's why I talk about not driving junk equipment because you need trailer brakes, especially if you're running in the mountains. You, you need those trailer brakes to work. And you don't know from day to day where they're going to send you. The trailer brakes and the tractor brakes need to be constantly checked and maintained. That's why you don't drive junk equipment, pull junk equipment. And I've done a video on that. While we're talking about stressful driving situations, one of the biggest stresses most drivers encounter almost every day is getting pulled into a way station. DriveWise has developed a bypass technology that lets you bypass the scales and relieve that tension. Their system works on all major ELDs or as an app on your cell phone. Bypassing the scales with DriveWise saves you time and money and right now they've got a 30 day free trial offer. Check out the offer below. All states and provinces, regardless of whether they have mountains there or not, require mandatory daily circle checks and those circle checks require getting underneath the truck and the trailer and checking those brakes every day and yes I know it can be a messy situation particularly in the winter time but they've got that as law for a reason and that's something that should not be neglected because you never know when you're going to find yourself in the situation when your brakes may fade and you want to go into every hill with properly adjusted brakes. Now I know as a driver, and I ran a lot of time in the mountains, that it can be a tough choice to make between taking the runaway lane or gambling and taking the chance to see if you can make it safely down the hill. But part of the problem is you never know what's past you going down the hill. There are always curves in the mountains. You don't know what's around the next curve. So if you choose to skip the bypass lane and hope the, hope the runaway situation just going down to the end of the highway is going to work for you, don't do that. You've got to make a choice with it, whether to use these things or not, these runaway lanes, but the smart choice is always not to gamble, not to take the chance on killing somebody if you decide to, to bypass the runaway lane, think you can run out of it, and then come around the next curve and nail somebody. So it's a tough choice. I'll give you that. But you've got to take the smart choice and hit the runaway lane. So something that I really should add in here, and I hesitate to do this, but this is the honest to, to God's truth. It's embarrassing to have to use a runaway lane for some drivers. And it's the super truckers don't want to admit that they ever make a mistake and they'll always take the chance and go down the hill. But this is the choice that separates the good drivers from the super truckers. The good drivers won't take a chance in a situation like this. They'll make the smart move and a guy that gambles with life and decides he's going to try to run it down the hill, that's the wrong choice and they're going to look even more stupid having a wreck at the bottom than if they'd taken the runaway lane. So they would have been smarter to take the runaway lane in the first place. Now I love driving in the mountains, I've done a ton of it, I loved it for the scenery, I loved it for the challenge, but trucking in the mountains is serious, serious business and it makes drivers take a lot of decisions and a lot of judgment calls. When it comes to losing your brakes going down a hill, you've got to make the right judgment call and usually if you're in trouble and the brakes are fading, you need to use the runaway lane. Now, as you can imagine, in my time in the mountains, I've got a few runaway lane stories, but I think my favorite one involves a driver that I knew that I worked with at a company, but he tended to like to drive too fast and be a little careless, and he didn't keep track of his brakes and whether they were in and out of adjustment or not. So one day, and he was on uh, Highway 93, just uh, in British Columbia, and he was headed down to Radium Hot Springs, and he lost control going down the hill. He burned out his brakes. He faded them out. He was pulling a, a fuel tanker with a trains full of fuel. So it was going to be a serious decision to make. He was smart enough to take the runaway ramp up the side of the hill. And uh, 
thank God he did it because if those tankers had a blown, it would have melted the snow for miles in every direction and burned everything. But he took the runaway lane and the truck charged up the runaway lane. It got to the point where the truck was losing its momentum, had lost its momentum. Mike decided he was going to bail because he didn't want to be going down the hill backwards. He jumped out of the truck and when he jumped out of the truck he landed badly on a stump that was on the side of the runaway lamp ramp and uh, broke his hip, broke his leg. The truck only rolled down another couple of feet and then got caught on some other stumps between the truck and the one trailer and it just hung up there on the side of the mountain. So Mike, Mike had jumped out, ruined himself, broke his hip and his leg and there was virtually no damage to the truck. He was the one that was injured but the truck and the load were fine. We were able to, to winch it down off the side of the mountain. It took, it took a couple of days because we had to pump out the tankers first into another truck and then winch it down piece by piece because it was an A-train. But the whole thing was a situation that worked out really well. He took the lane, that was the right move to make, and the only damage was to himself. So stay safe. When you're running in the mountains, go down the hill slow and keep a cool head because a cool head will make the best decisions. Keep the rubber side down and I'll see you on the back home.